So, a few months ago, I'm sure you will remember that we discussed the filming of the Space 1999 episode, Space Brain, and the uh, submersion by foam of director Charles Crichton. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember that. Because he said a rude thing, didn't he, when he fell over? He did. Yeah. Anyway, we won't go into that. (laughs) But today's Fab Fact concerns another episode that he directed. In fact, the second episode of the entire series, Matter of Life and Death. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, for those who need a reminder, this is the one where the Alphans are preparing to investigate a new planet when Dr. Russell's long-dead husband, Lee, <gasps> played by Richard Johnson, turns up and tells them not to, but they ignore oh, him and happens. go down anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, upon arriving on the planet, Koenig and Helena meet its seemingly only indigenous form of life, some parrots. Oh, yes. Now, obviously, these parrots were hired from some kind of <laughs> animal performer rental service <laughs> yeah. so that they could appear on the show. However, once they were placed on the alien planet set and the cameras rolled, one of them was revealed to be a very quick (gasps) study because it went on to ruin take after take by calling cut in a perfect imitation of director Charles (laughs) Crichton's distinctive voice. (laughs) Great. Uh, Now, possibly, this parrot was a budding director himself, and maybe he spotted some legitimate problem with the scene. But obviously, you can only have one director, and that was Charles Crichton. So unfortunately, this particular parrot had to be uh cut from the production. Uh Wait, what do you mean by that? Well, it was just it's dismissed. Just, oh, I see. Nothing serious. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, we should point out that this naughty parrot is not typical of many hard-working actor parrots in the British film industry. Right. For example, the late great Diana Rigg once owned a parrot named Chrome, uh, with whom she used to practice her lines for various projects. Unfortunately, she eventually okay. had to get rid of Chrome, partly because her career meant she couldn't spend as much time with him as she needed, and partly ah. because having rehearsed the script for On Her Majesty's Secret Service with him... He then yeah. took to reciting lines from the film to any visitors to their house. Not ideal <gasps> when he spilled the beans on certain plot oh! twists the producers would oh, rather no! have kept secret. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So, Diana gave Chrome to her Avengers stunt double, Sid Child. And a few years later, Sid stunt doubled for a pre maya Catherine Shell in Return of the Pink Panther. Ah, uh, yeah. Word yes. got around that Sid owned a parrot, and this eventually landed Chrome the role of a naughty parrot in the sequel, The Pink Panther Strikes Again. <laughs> so, <laughs> this, does, right, this is going on. somewhere. <laughs> having, <laughs> having shared the big screen with Peter Sellers, where was yeah. Chrome going to go next? Well, I, I can't wait. Well, that's right, Richard James, you've guessed it. Into the oh. James Bond films. Uh, eh? Friend of the podcast and future Space Precinct director John Glenn cast Chrome oh, yes. the Parrot as Max the Parrot in For Your Eyes Only. Uh, he's the one that, that chats up Margaret Thatcher at the end of the film. You know the one? Uh, yeah. John was evidently so impressed by his performance that he hired him again in 1987 <laughs> for The Living Daylights. Is it first right. of April today? Um, where, where he played the parrot in the kitchen. In I mean, fact, yeah, okay, but listen, he, he's quite limited, though. He only seems to play parrots. <laughs> yes, he's not I mean, like you. Not much, you can uh, play cigarettes and aliens and humans <laughs> exactly. and knights at the round table. Anyway, uh, the very first shot filmed by the first unit on the first day of shooting for The Living Daylights was a close-up of Chrome the Parrot. No. So clearly, the animal acting industry of the 1970s and 80s included some professionally trained thespian parrots like Crow. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. Space 1999 was not to be blessed with his talents. Although Sid Child would later be Catherine Schell's stunt double again during the second season of Space 1999. So maybe a role could have been found for Chrome. Although right. he sounds like he was more interested in doing movies than television. <laughs> Right, he's moved on, do you think, in his career? <laughs> so I think he had. I mean, <laughs> I thought you were just doing a parrot impression there. What? Uh, um, what? Yeah, it's... Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the strangest fat facts I think we've, we've had. <laughs> Sorry, what was the connection again? <laughs> it was the naughty parrot up front. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, that's good. Uh, that's good, that, I like uh, it. Imitated Charles okay. Brighton. So... Uh, yeah, that's right. So I guess okay. possible the question Great. is, do you have a parrot that can imitate an Anderson uh-huh. actor or crew member <laughs> yeah. perfectly? Uh, we'd love yeah. to know and hear a recording. Please do I mean, send that terrible. to the podcast at jerryanson.com. I, I, yeah, the, the parrot uh, uh, spoiling the end of uh, On a Imagine Secret Service to any, any visitors that happen to come around. Yeah. She dies at the end! <laughs> she dies at the end! Oh, I, I haven't sorry. seen it yet. Spoil- sorry, spoilers. Oh. Sorry. <clears throat> 
Anyway, I'm sure they were really irritated by that parrot shouting cut because after the first couple of times, <laughs> it just wouldn't be funny because they, you know, they no. had you know, uh, schedule exactly. to keep to and it was costing yes. them money. And so yes. maybe yes. it was. I was really hoping that uh, it was going to be Chrome, the same parrot. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That, that, that would have been something. But sadly, it seems like that wasn't to be. Sadly not. Anyway, that's an unusual fat fact, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is, yes. Can't wait to see the comments underneath this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a feeling they'll be rather unusual. Anyway, if you've got any other thoughts of uh, birds appearing in Jerry Anderson shows, or any others for that matter, then to, do please comment uh, wherever you find this, or drop us an email to podcast at jerryanderson.com, and I look forward to hearing your various birds uh, and their uh, ornithological impressions... <laughs> of Anderson-related actors and uh, crew members. 